Welcome to Food for Thought Podcast, the place to explore, celebrate, and manifest a life motivated and defined by unconditional compassion and optimal wellness. Today's episode is plant-based food rituals for the new year. Before we begin, my name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. You can find me at joyfulvegan.com and on social media, and you can find my books wherever books are sold. You can also join me in my online cooking classes. This podcast is possible because of the support of listeners like you. So thank you for subscribing, supporting, and listening. You can join other supporters by going to patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau and become a patron, either annually or monthly. First of all, I guess this is second of all, Happy New Year. Depending on your religion and cultural heritage, of course, the New Year may be celebrated anytime between January and December. Here I am on January 1st, marking the New Year. But this holiday is celebrated throughout the year by many different cultures. I thought it would be fun to talk about some of the plant-based food rituals that play a role in the celebrations for the new year. And it might not be surprising to you that many of these food rituals, many of these customs, many of these traditions are plant-based. They're vegan, if you will, but they're plant-based because this holiday is often tied to the reaping of the harvest and the planting of new crops. So of course it makes sense that many of these rituals would be based on plants. Let's start with a hiding ritual. In many cultures, it's custom to conceal a token inside bread or pastry, blessing the one who finds it with prosperity in the coming year. Armenians, for instance, bake a coin into their traditional flat bread. You can do that. Italians hide a bean in their epiphany cake or their epiphany bread. It's called torta della befana. Scandinavians hide an almond in their rice pudding, also something you can do, and Mexicans hide a doll inside their king's cake, the recipient of which becomes king or queen for the day. You just have to make sure you find that doll before you swallow it. There is a Spanish good luck ritual to eat 12 grapes at midnight, one each time the clock chimes, and that's shared by the people of Portugal, Mexico, the Philippines, and Peru. And the Peruvians add a 13th grape for good measure. Even if New Year's Eve has passed for you, you can still do this on New Year's Day. You can do this any time of the year because, of course, the threshold of going from one year to the next, we cross thresholds every day. So you can cross a threshold from Monday to Tuesday and celebrate the next day by incorporating any of these rituals, of course, as well. The legume, I mentioned already that a bean is hidden inside that Italian cake or or bread. The bean plays a role in many cultures. It's a good luck sign in many countries, festivities in many regions of Italy. Again, it's believed that eating lentils will bring good fortune all year. And it's what we usually do here in my house in the Patrick Goudreau household. On New Year's Day, I usually prepare some lentil based Uh, soup or stew, not very different than many of the other soups I make throughout the year. I do love lentils and I do love beans, but it is something I'm very conscious of making on New Year's Day. Argentinians believe that eating beans signifies that you will keep your job or find a better one. And of course, in the southern US, it's traditional to eat black eyed peas and turnip greens, uh, sometimes collard greens uh, for New Year's Day for New Year's Eve, the peas represent coins, and the greens represent dollars, paper dollars. When it comes to rituals that revolve around animals, this isn't food related, but there is a Buddhist custom of releasing captive animals in Southeast Asia in particular. And of course, the intention is lovely, but this is problematic because of unintended consequences for the animals themselves, but also for ecosystems. But it is a New Year ritual born out of compassion. We can take this 
ritual in this tradition and we can just modify it so that it does not harm any ecosystems or any animals we can volunteer for an animal organization we can rescue an animal we can adopt an animal we can foster animals so there are lots of ways to save captive animals and release captive animals and it has to be said that one of the best and most significant ways that we can release captive animals is to not consume animals. So that is something we can do, of course. In Poland, this is related to food now, back to food and animals. In Poland, bread is baked in the shape of different animals. And then these breads are given as gifts to others along with good wishes. This is definitely something I plan on incorporating into my New Year's rituals. I love the idea of baking breads into different animal shapes. And there are many traditional foods served on the New Year throughout the world that just so happen to be plant-based or can easily be made plant-based, such as dolmas in Armenia, soba noodles, and mochi in Japan. There is a a pudding called kutya in Ukraine, which is made from boiled wheat berries with raisins and poppy seeds. Marzipan ring cake in Denmark. Many of you have seen this. If you watch the Great British Bake Off, you would have seen this wonderful cake of rings. It's shaped like a tree, and it's a it's a Scandinavian uh, bread slash cake dessert, and uh, that's traditional for New Year's. Challah bread, of course, during Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. Baklava in Iran. Bannock, which is an oat cake, and scotch broth, which is a vegetable stew in Scotland. So whatever you do, I think incorporating starting some kind of ritual, some kind of intentional tradition so that you're bringing good wishes into the new year, doing it intentionally, doing it with thought, doing it as a gift for yourself or for those with whom you live or for friends, for neighbors. So I encourage you to incorporate them into your new year celebrations. But like I said, you can incorporate these as you celebrate any new day. So bake some bread, make some beans and greens, hide a coin in some rice pudding, put a bean in that bread, whatever you do, do it with love and compassion and good intentions. And that's what I wish for you. So happy new year. Don't do nothing because you can't do everything. Do something, anything. For the animals, this is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.